Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of mammary Paget's disease and what we're looking at is the nipple. So here I'm outlining the epidermis of the nipple. Then we have the dermis of the nipple and here is some underlying nipple stroma. I'm going to just zoom into this area where we can see a lactiferous duct. And as we go on high magnification, we can actually appreciate the bilayered or the double layered epithelium, which is normal. There is no evidence of in situ carcinoma or ductal carcinoma in situ or invasive carcinoma in this nipple. The area of abnormality is in the epidermis, but before we go to the abnormal area, let's have a quick recap of the normal epidermis. And this is made up of stratified squamous epithelium with a layer of keratin. So this is keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. We can see that the epithelium is thrown into many layers. And we can also appreciate that towards the more superficial layers, the nuclei tend to lie down horizontally and also that the cells have more cytoplasm towards the surface. This change in orientation from vertical to horizontal and the acquisition of more cytoplasm with cells with lower NC ratios, this is known as maturation and it is a sign of benign stratified squamous epithelium. Now I'm going to navigate towards the abnormal area and here we start to see some pathology. There are these very large cells dotted throughout the epidermis and if we look carefully at these cells, we can see that they have large irregular nuclei, very prominent nucleoli, and abundant pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. And these cells are bigger than the surrounding squamous cells. These are malignant glandular cells. Sometimes they occur as single cells, but in other areas we can see nests of these cells. So there are several of these cells together in one nest, and they are very clearly demarcated from the rest of the epidermis because the cells look very different from the squamous cells. This is Paget's disease and these malignant glandular cells are thought to originate from ductal carcinoma in situ in the breast where they crawl into the lactiferous ductal system which eventually becomes continuous with the epidermis of the nipple. Most cases of mammary Paget's disease will also have underlying DCIS or invasive breast carcinoma. So it's very important if a diagnosis of Paget's disease is made to look for underlying cancer. Let's have a quick look at a gross specimen. And here is our online virtual pathology museum and we're looking at the breast chapter. Let me just select the case of Paget's disease and what we're looking at here is a specimen, a virtual specimen of a breast. There has been a section cut here in the breast parenchyma and we are going to focus now on the skin of the nipple. Let me just magnify this and we can see here that there is crusting of the skin of the nipple and in the live patient there may be some oozing as well and this is a classical appearance of Paget's disease. I'm just going to show you some of the labels here and I'm now going to turn the specimen around so that we can have a look at the breast parenchyma and this is generally where we would want to look for any obvious mass lesions and there is currently nothing very obvious here. However, almost 100% of these patients will have underlying abnormality such as DCIS or invasive carcinoma. If we scroll down, we can actually see um, a little bit of description and another example of a gross image of Paget's disease. This is what it would look like in a fresher example where you can see some crusting and some oozing of the nipple epidermis. And this is a high magnification view and we also have an example of the microscopic appearance. If you would like full access to our online virtual pathology museum with more than 700 virtual specimens, you simply need to register for PathWeb. Registration is free and you can find the link in the video description. 
So in summary, this is a microscopic slide of the nipple of the breast, and we can see that within the epidermis, there are many abnormal malignant cells, either occurring singly or in small nests. And these cells are different from the surrounding squamous cells because the nuclei are larger, they have more prominent nucleoli, they have more abundant pale cytoplasm, and these are malignant glandular cells in a case of mammary Paget's disease. Thank you.